Okay, guys, to wrap up today's show, Alex from Ridgeline is going to talk about what he considers his ultimate optic setup for an AR-15. Hey guys, Alex from Ridgeline Defense down here in Gautier, Mississippi. Today I want to talk to you about what I would consider sort of the ultimate optic setup for the AR-15 currently. Uh, the recent years we've seen just a, an absolute revolution in optics technology and the, we call LPVOs or low power variable optics or uh, kind of the, the hotness uh, these days. There are some things to consider if you're looking to, to get one or looking to get the maximum performance out of your setup. Uh, some things that I want to start with are um, mount height. So mount height is kind of a, a, a debatable subject these days. This one is a, a 1.54, which means that the Z axis or the center line of this optic is at 1.54 inches off the top of this rail. This is a SOCOM spec, so that clip on night vision devices will fit in front with, uh, without a major difference in the uh, ocular to objective lenses uh, that can cause a bit of a, a, a zero shift. All right, what this does is it allows us to get really good cheek weld on the stock. We get down, we sink into our cheekbone, is good on that stock. We're in that eye box of the X people, the LPVO, and we're able to put really good mechanically precise shots on target. Uh, what this does fail, or where this kind of comes up short, is in guys that do a lot of stand up or CQC type shooting where um, they, they want that good head up for, uh, posture for uh, situational awareness, uh, for shooting on the move, etc. And that's where you guys will see the application of like 193 or 204 mounts uh, that, have, that have come into favor and come into. Um, that have become very popular. So what they're looking for is to be able to keep that buttstock in their shoulder, all right, and when they get on the scope, it can be a little bit higher and they'll still be in that eye box versus this 154 where I actually have to sink down, get that good cheek weld all right, to be in that eye box. Um, now for me, I really like being able to sink down in because when I'm using my LPVO as my primary optic, I'm looking to get the most precise shots that I can. The reason I can get away with this is because I run an offset red dot. Now, most people have run offset red dots off their rails or off to the one o'clock right, for several years. Um, what I've found though is that sometimes having to roll the gun into that red dot, uh, you really have to drive your face down on the target. You can't keep that good upright posture. Because of that, I like to run my offset red dot up here, kind of one o'clock off the tube or at a 45. What this allows me to do is kind of roll the gun slightly, cant it, um, I've got the, it basically puts that red dot at what would be that 193 or 204 type height. I've got a little bit of a parallel zero, but I confirm my stuff out to 300 yards. So inside of that, that rifleman's responsibility, I'm able to maintain my, my hit uh, effectiveness in the event that the LPVO goes down. Now, LPVOs don't fail all that often. Even the ones that are battery powered have etched reticles, so you're still going to be able to use that to get good hits. I don't really refer to this as a secondary sighting system. This can be my primary sighting system when I have to engage immediate threats, when I'm shooting on the move, when I'm engaging multiple targets up close. This is my go-to. So it's not you know, a primary and a secondary, it's two primaries based on, uh, on the situation. Uh, additionally, things that I like to look at, if I am going to run a, uh, a higher rise mount, I like to use a correspondingly high cheek piece so I can still get that good upright posture but I maintain a good cheek weld to be able to deliver the, as much accuracy as I can out of the weapon system. Going back to the red dot, things that I like to use it for, is putting it up here, one, allows me to clear any lasers that I might be running on my, my optic, specifically uh, my MAL DA. Additionally, I can use it for uh, passive night vision use, all right, so that I don't have to broadcast. I can look down, it's a little bit easier to try to get the tubes in over here than try to get them down in here behind the optic. Uh, and lastly, I use it for rapid target identification or acquisition. So when I see a target at distance, I can snap my red dot up on. Once that red dot's on target, I roll the gun and the reticle settles on the target. Again, guys, we've enjoyed this optics revolution for the last few years. This has been a really great time to be an AR-15 shooter. I'm Alex from Ridgeline. Till next time, train hard, stay safe. Trigger Time TV is brought to you by Horus Vision. Bravo Company USA, Hornady, Cheaper Than Dirt, Car Arm, Magnum Research, Thompson Auto Ordnance, Desert Tech, Elite Iron, The Neomag, Really Right Stuff, True North Concept and Peltor. We would like to dedicate today's show to the men and women of the United States military and law enforcement. 
the people that stand in the gap and keep our country free. God bless America.